Well, we made it. Just in time for BlizzCon. I hope. We've counted down through four out of five Hearthstone adventures I think may, but most likely won't, be announced at BlizzCon. Ice Crown Citadel, The Trolls, Hellfire Citadel, bit of a Citadel theme going on here, Ulduar, and now my number one pick for most likely Hearthstone adventure. With the Warcraft expansion Legion on the horizon, it's the perfect time to release a Black Temple adventure, the fortress of the maddened Illidan Stormrage. I hope you're prepared. The Black Temple is the raid with the fewest bosses that we've looked at so far, nine in total. I have some ideas to extend this, possibly to add a wing dedicated to one of Illidan's lieutenants raids. Either Tempest Keep with Kael'thas Sunstrider at the end, or Lady Varsh in Coilfang Reservoir, but these could possibly be adventures in their own right. Kael'thas and Varsh could also possibly be encounters in the final wing with Illidan, though this has the same problem as the first suggestion. Or you could have a wing dedicated to Illidan's history, the player playing as Illidan against some of his key opponents. This could include Azinoth, the demon Illidan slew to obtain his iconic glaives, Manoroth, who we see him take on in the Caverns of Time, Tychondrius, who Illidan defeated to help defeat the Burning Legion a second time, and maybe even Illidan's most crushing loss against Arthas Menethil. Illidan was a Night Elf, until he consumed the power of the Skull of Gul'dan, turning him into neither Night Elf nor Demon but something more. Of course, if Hearthstone's to be believed, he's just a demon. Seeing what his brother had become, Malfurion banished Illidan. He would later return to try dispatching the Lich King, but failed. Retreating to his Black Temple, once holy ground to the Draenei in Outland, Illidan's failure ate away at him, driving him mad. The Temple's first wing would consist of three bosses. High Warlord Nagentus, Supremus and the Shade of Akama. Nagentus was matched in strength by few of Lady Varsha's Naga. Because of this, he was entrusted to guard the sewers of the Black Temple, ensuring no force could gain access from the depths. In WoW, he would attack the raid with a series of frost-based spells and pin them to the ground with spines. He would also gain a shield, which would heal him over time. The Tidal Shield could be Nagentus' hero power in Hearthstone, making him immune and healing damage each turn. In WoW, the shield would be broken by throwing one of the Naga's spines back at him. In Hearthstone, this could be a costly spell to the hero's face. Players would have to choose between having their mana limited for a turn or letting Nagentus heal up. The second boss of the first wing, Supremus, was an utterly huge infernal that blocked off access to the main body of the temple. In WoW, Supremus was able to create volcanoes that erupted from underneath the hero's feet that fought him. I can easily see this being a spell card, damaging one minion for high damage and dealing reduced damage to the rest of his enemy's board. Supremus's hero power would be Hateful Strike. In WoW, Supremus would deal high damage to the hero with the highest life in melee range. In Hearthstone, it could destroy the highest health minion. Players may look to throw Supremus off by putting cards like Mogushan in their decks, for example. The final boss of the first wing would be the Shade of Akama. Akama was a broken Draenei, hence his deformed features that aided Illidan claim the Black Temple from the Pit Lord Magtheridon, who could also be a part of the Illidan history concept I mentioned earlier. From the moment Magtheridon was defeated, Akama knew he had made a mistake, only replacing one Dark Lord with another. He now seeks to betray the Betrayer and lead his people away from Illidan's oppressive rule. The Shade of Akama is the dark part of the Broken Soul and binds him to Illidan's service. The first part of this fight was extremely ad-heavy, Broken swarming to stop Akama from defeating his dark half. This could be the hero power to begin, summoning a random Broken from this encounter. In the second half of the encounter, heroes had very little time to destroy the Shade before it claimed Akama's life. Without Akama, Illidan could not be defeated. In the second half, an Akama could spawn on your side of the board. 
If the Shade kills him, it also destroys your hero. Beating the Shade would award the Akama Legendary, a 4 mana stealth card that chips away at the enemy hero, inspired by his Warcraft 3 hero unit. The second wing would be the Halls of Anguish, containing Gertog Bloodboil, the Reliquy of Souls and Terran Gorefiend. Two of these names will be familiar from the Hellfire concept. Gertog in this instance is a fell dire orc. A fell orc is an orc exposed to so much demonic corruption, their skin turns red and their bodies begin to deform, usually from drinking copious amounts of demon blood. Illidan fueled the fell orc part of his armies using the blood of the captured pit lord, Magtheridan. Dire orcs are created through rituals practiced by the Bleeding Hollow clan of orcs though it would appear to be a practice they gifted to other clans, as Gertog belonged to the Bone Chewer clan. He now leads Illidan's fell orcs in the area. Gertog's encounter was a race against time, his fell rage buff slowly increasing his strength. I like to repeat this in Hearthstone, making Gertog similar to a patchwork fight. His hero power, fell rage, would steadily increase his attack. Gertog would prioritise minions, having a huge life total to offset this. His minions would be based around making his attack even more potent, perhaps giving them a cleave effect to damage all minions on board, or an effect that meant his attack split evenly between the enemy minion and their hero. It's not exactly known what the Reliquy of Souls actually is, though we have seen a second of its kind in the Forge of Souls during the Wrath of the Lich King expansion. If I were to guess, I'd say it's a twisted amalgamation of tortured souls, possibly dying in the ways that represent each face of the boss. The Reliquy of Souls had three forms, so it makes sense for it to have three faces in Hearthstone, representing each. One face of the Reliquy is the Essence of Suffering. His hero power could be the Aura of Suffering, making any minion with Taunt useless whenever they enter play playing off the aura's effect in WoW, which greatly decreased the raid's defensive capabilities. The second phase could be the Essence of Desire, whose hero power could be Rune Shield, which prevents her minions from being targeted by abilities, including those of other cards. The final stage could be the Essence of Anger, with a hero ability called Soul Scream. In WoW, this would damage a player and burn away their mana. There are a couple of ways this could be done in Hearthstone damaging two minions and silencing them, or damaging the enemy hero and destroying one of their mana crystals. The final encounter of this wing would be Terran Gorefiend, the first of Gul'dan's Death Knights, the souls of powerful orcish warlocks inhabiting the decaying bodies of human knights. Gorefiend was a name that struck fear into the entirety of the Alliance, until he was finally destroyed by the Paladin Torellian or so it was thought. Gorfin's lingering soul was able to trick adventurers into reviving him once again. Gorfin proved in the Black Temple why he was feared, able to instantly kill players and spawn hosts of undead to assault the raid, topped off with a mastery of the warlock arts. In fact, thinking about it, Terran Gorfin would make an awesome alternate warlock hero. In this encounter, Gorfin's hero power could be Shadow of Death, destroying an enemy minion and summoning three shadowy constructs to fight for him. This would award the players with a Terran Gorfiend Legendary, with the same effect as the Gorfiend Hero Power, only used on a random enemy minion. The final wing would be the Temple Summit, containing Mother Shiraz, Illidari Council and Illidan himself. Shiraz is a Shivara, a demon that is yet to make an appearance in Hearthstone, and is thought to lead the concubines of the Black Temple later wings of the temple looking quite debauched. Her hero power could be Saber Lash, dividing six damage between three minions. The fewer minions, the more damage they take. She also made use of a variety of beams during her fight, which could possibly appear as cards, anything from straight damage to removal to silencing effects. These effects are all very similar to what they did in WoW. The second last encounter would be the Illidari Council, four powerful Blood Elves gifted to Illidan by his Lieutenant Kael'thas to act as the last line of defence for his master. They each represent a class that is found in Hearthstone, Rogue, Mage, Priest and Paladin. 
With this in mind, perhaps their hero power could be more Hearthstone based, for 5 mana casting a random spell from each of the classes they represent. Finally, we'd come to Illidan. Again, for this one, I'd really like to hear the ideas you guys come up with. I personally would think Illidan would be a three-phased fight, one in regular form, one flying, and the other with Illidan in his demon form. I also think it would be quite nice if it harked back to his Hearthstone tutorial, having an encounter that at first seems impossible. Maybe a way of evening the scales would be through cards given to the player by Maiev Shadowsong, a night elf watcher that has been hunting Illidan for years. Maiev's cards could possibly nullify the effects of some of Illidan's attacks, or affect his board in a significant way. Illidan's first hero power could be Parasite, summoning a parasitic Shadow Fiend. If the Shadow Fiend attacks and dies, it spawns another two Fiends. The Fiend itself should be the attacker in order for this to trigger. When Illidan flies into the air, he could throw his glaives into the ground, summoning two flames of Azanoth minions, far more powerful than the ones from his card effect. The hero power could be Eye Beam, dealing a small amount of damage to each of your minions. During the final stage, Illidan's hero power could be Aura of Dread, that ticks for more damage the longer he stays alive. After his defeat, Illidan would reward players with the Maiev Shadow Song Legendary, who acts as the ultimate saboteur. Like I mentioned previously, Black Temple doesn't really have enough bosses for an adventure alone, so how would you go about creating more encounters in a way I haven't already mentioned? Cross promotion wise, Black Temple makes the most sense with Legion on the horizon, and this raid is well loved by the community. That's why I've placed it as the most likely to be announced at BlizzCon. Which adventure do you think Blizzard will announce? Maybe Karazhan or Ankaraj? From reading the comments, some people would really like to see those. I really hope you've enjoyed this little concept. If you did, like, subscribe and share it around. All the artists I've been able to find are credited in the description below, so check out their work. Would you like to see more of this kind of content in the future, just not as regularly? Let me know. Next video made by me will be a brand new episode of Lore of the Cards. Happy Hearthstoning guys.